Hey there, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. I am Bob, and joining me today, very special day today. I can't believe we got him. It's Will. Hey. And how's my everybody doing? Covering his face. On, the, on this frigid, <laughs> frigid ass uh, Tuesday night. What is that about? Island. I don't know. And I don't like it. No, I mean the blanket. <laughs> I'm cold. It's cold in here. You don't have heat? I have heat, but it's still freezing. I mean, we have the ho- one of the hoses, one of the hoses, the only hose we have in the house, like there's ice forming around it because apparently there's a slow leak and it just froze all the water. Oh, that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, I'm sure that's fantastic. Anyway, I'm sure I have a ruined hose now because of that. But yeah, it's freezing over here and this is supposed to be spring. I don't like it. I see, Fix I don't it, know. scientists. I don't go outside. I don't notice anything. My heat just stays on. It's just you set it, and then I just never think about it again. <laughs> Except in this room. This room is too tiny. Yeah. So uh, when I turn the heat, that air, this air conditioning is the whole wall, <laughs> and this room is not big. So if I turn the heat yeah. on at all, it is sweating in here. Yeah. But it's always hot in here, so I usually don't have to do anything in this room. Anyway uh there's a lot to talk about today two major things uh yes. we're definitely gonna get to uh breath of the wild being delayed and also there's some new just some new screenshots yes all of a sudden and there was one image in particular that i think sort of debunks a theory yes. that we had yes but we'll get to that when we get to that uh but i figured we had more to talk about would you shut up I figured we'd have more to talk about with this uh, PlayStation Plus uh, update. Uh, they have new tiers now, and everyone's calling it the Game Pass killer. Yes. And, and it's been rumored for like a week that they were going to do this, and they finally did it. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, they're gunning for the neck of Microsoft. Yeah, this is it. Game Pass is dead. Long live PlayStation Plus. Yes. Before we get into That's any of that, not though. really. Yes. I want to talk about a giveaway we're doing. Apparently, my access has been denied to the giveaway because I'm using a VPN. <laughs> so I can't even pull it up on screen. But uh, we're giving away tickets to PAX East. All you have to do is do exclamation point giveaway in the chat here. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, go to the description. It'll be a link in the, uh, uh, it'll it'll be a link to a tweet in the description because YouTube doesn't like gleam. Um and if you are on Twitter, you might, if you're watching this, uh, if you listen to this on podcast form, go to twitter.com slash the wolf den and it'll be in a tweet. Um, uh, I, it's all the, the contest is only going to go till this Thursday, uh, this Thursday night at like eight o'clock at night. So I'm trying to do this quick because I was supposed to do this weeks ago and I completely forgot. <laughs> um, and they're extending it for me. We oh, have wow. three tickets to give away. We could give them to three different people, but why would you want to go to a game convention alone? So I'm going to yeah. give them all to one person. If you only have a friend to go with or you have nobody to go with, I could re-roll and give those extra tickets to somebody else if you'd like. Um, but if you want all three, you're more than welcome to have all three. Give them to your friends. Do whatever you want with them. I don't care. Uh, so you if you want to go to PAX East this year. Outside the convention center. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say that, probably against the terms of service for the contest, <laughs> but uh, I won't tell anybody. Um, so, yeah, if you want to go to PAX East this year, I'll be there. I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but I'll be there. Uh, so uh, you get some free tickets if you enter the contest uh, and win. Anyway, uh, now we can talk about PlayStation and and, yes. and uh, the, 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 the Game Pass Killer. Yes. I know nothing about this. I saw this launch. La- this okay. this this came out yesterday, and uh, yes. I'm I so happy it came didn't out even today. look at it. Um. Okay. So there was a blog post posted on the PlayStation blog. All new PlayStation Plus launches in June with 700 plus games and more value than ever. Okay. Well, this is according to this- PlayStation. So. 
Yes, and this is a blog post written by President and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, Jim Ryan. Okay. Since the launch of PlayStation Plus in 2010, uh, Sony has been at the forefront of innovation with game subscription services. We were thrilled to be the first console membership service that included a, re a refresh library of games through PlayStation Plus and also launched the first console gaming streaming service with PlayStation Now, lest you forget. Uh, today, we are pleased to share with you official news about changes coming to our subscription services. This June, we are bringing together PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now in an all-new PlayStation Plus subscription service that provides more choice to the consumers across three membership tiers globally. Our focus is on providing high-quality curated content with a... Diverse portfolio of games. Below is an overview of the three membership tiers. All right. So PlayStation Plus will now be broken up into three different versions. You're not just getting the one. Uh, the first version is PlayStation Plus Essential. Uh, the benefits include provides the same benefits that PlayStation Plus members are already getting today, such as uh, two monthly downloadable games, exclusive discounts, cloud storage for saved games, online multiplayer access, uh, and there, and after that, there are no other changes for existing PlayStation Plus members. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, yes. Two monthly downloadable games? Hasn't it been more than that? It's been, well... Or is that the, the minimum? I think that, well, okay. So during the PlayStation 4 era, it was two. Okay. I think with the PlayStation 5, they bumped it to three, but I don't think that's going to last very long. Okay, so so I've... it's probably been two. It's just sometimes they give you an extra. Sometimes you get a VR game. Sometimes you get like a like a yes. rando like PlayStation yes, ex 4 game exactly. or whatever. It's, it's at minimum two, but probably no more than four. Mm -hmm. So essentially... PlayStation Plus Essential is exactly what PlayStation Plus is now. Okay. It's the basic it, bitch it uh, 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 exactly. one, and it's the one that it's, we already have. It's going to cost the same $9.99 a month, $24.99 quarterly, or 60 bucks for the whole year. So if you're already a PlayStation Plus member, this is what you have. And once this new thing kicks off, it'll remain the same if you don't choose to upgrade. Okay. The next year. All right. Now, next year, now they got to sell me on this because I'm going to be giving play more money now. Yeah. So tier two is PlayStation Plus Extra. Provides all the benefits from the essential tier. So everything I just mentioned. And adds a catalog of up to 400 of the most enjoyable PS4 and PS5 games, including blockbuster hits, from our PlayStation Studios catalog and third-party partners. Games in the extra tier are downloadable for play. So essentially what you're getting is access to a library of 400 games across PS4 and PS5, first-party and third-party, and they're not cloud. It's download to console. Okay, that's kind of a lot. Yes. Uh, and this is, at least in the U.S., it will be $14.99 a month, $39.99 quarterly, or $100 for the year. $100 a year, because who, who buys these things monthly? So so it's, it's $60 for the essential plan, the one that we already have, versus $100 for this, which includes a bunch of games. It's kind of like Game Pass. Yes. yes. That's pretty cool. So, so this 400, didn't PlayStation Now have 400 games? PlayStation Now had a lot of games. Yeah. I think this this is basically just PlayStation Now, but you can download them to your console, which is a big concern well, and a big reason why people didn't even want PlayStation Now. Well, play because PlayStation Now was confusing because it was at first it was cloud, then it was download to console, but PS3 games were cloud only. And then they added PS2 games. Some of them were cloud, some of them were download, right. and it, it was it was messy and confusing. And, this and, is console. This is it, consolidating everything into a much more easy to understand uh, idea. And when PlayStation Now launched, people didn't like it because it was mostly. Yeah. I mean, it was all it was all remote play. Um, yeah. Or, well, or, people or, didn't like it because 
and it had a confusing pricing structure. You have paid, okay. you paid, you know, for time. You know, you paid for an hour or like two hours, or for the day, or for like a month. I actually, did per game. <laughs> yeah. So, um, it, so there's a lot wrong with it, and 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 that stigma carried over until present day. Even though they changed yeah. a lot about PlayStation now, uh, yeah. it's, it's people were still kind of salty about it. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's only the middle plan. There is yes. another plan. There is tier three, PlayStation Plus Premium. And premium provides all of the benefits from the essential tier and the extra tier. Um, adds up to 340 additional games, including PS3 games available via cloud streaming and a catalog of beloved classics available in both streaming and download options from the original PlayStation, the PlayStation 2, and the PSP generations. Offers cloud streaming access for original PlayStation, PS2, and PS4 games offered in the extra and premium tiers in select markets where PlayStation Now is currently available. Customers can stream games using PS4 and PS5 consoles and PC. And lastly, timed limited game trials will also be offered in this tier so customers can try select games before they buy. So 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 this is 200 this is $120 a year. So $120 you got, a year. You got yeah. 60, 100 and 120. 120 yeah. not that much more for the for the premium. No. Um, so this pretty much adds backwards compatibility via cloud. Mm, yes and no. It gives you access to all of these games, but mm -hmm. you have to you have to buy or re-download the games again. I can't put a PS3 desk into my PS4 or PS5 and then magically be able to play that game. Right. So this is essentially giving you access to that library that Sony is curating. It's giving you a, a, a selection of retro games to play. Yes. PlayStation 3 and and and, and beyond. Um, yeah. So that's what you're getting for your extra $20 a month. Yeah. I guess that's, that's worth $20, I would say. Uh, it's unfortunate I, that it's cloud. Yeah. I think I think a big problem with PS3 is because it's very hard to emulate, like mm -hmm. through software emulation or even hardware emulation. That for Sony, the easiest solution for them is cloud streaming on PS right. uh, for PS3. So Modern Vintage Gamer had a tweet today that I'll like mm -hmm. that says emulation of PS3 is absolutely possible on PlayStation 5 hardware. Sony has never been interested in investing the millions to make it happen, however. So this is like a double-sided tweet because it's like they could do it. It's just going to take them a lot of money and resources. So like, right. so, so like, so like I get, I get it. They could totally do it. I mean, I mean, they're already making huge drives in like the homebrew community to, to be able to do it. Yeah. But um, in order to do it the way Sony wants to do it, it would probably cost them millions of dollars and there might not be a return on that investment. So that's, right. that's the, argument here um i mean hey maybe if this premium situation makes a lot of money maybe they'll f try to figure out a way how to get cloud streaming to, to work yeah i mean how to get playstation 3 to work without cloud streaming um yeah. but it also says a catalog of be beloved games available both streaming and download from playstation ps2 and psp so that that essentially means that you know, in the premium tour tier, yes, you can download them to your console, um, like you can in the in the extra tier. But if you want to stream it, like maybe you want to play it on your PC instead mm -hmm. of on the PS4, or PS5, you have the option to do so in the premium tier. Okay, does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah, I wonder Basically because. It's it's easier to download the game to your console than it is to stream it across the internet. So you, if you want that ability, you're going to have to pay Sony so that they can keep it going for you. I wonder if you'd be able to play these cloud games on your computer because it's just a cloud. 
They said PC. Offers I just said services. PC. You said a lot of things. You think I'm listening to every single thing you say? I'm running a show oh, I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought this was a conversational podcast where we listen to each other talk about the news it is, of the day. But there's so much shit in this post here. When I when Customer. you read a whole thing and then I jump in and I'm like, okay, so it's a hundred dollars. That's me trying to take the most important piece of information and learn it. I don't think you picked the most important part of the information, though. <laughs> I'm learning here. You're teaching me. All right. Okay. Let me let me read that bullet point to you again. Please. Listen carefully. Offers cloud streaming access for original PlayStation, PS2, PSP, and PS4 games offered in the extra and premium tiers in select markets where PlayStation Now is currently available. Customers can stream these games using PS4 and PS5 consoles and PC. Okay, so that means all of the cloud streaming can also be on PC. Yes. And then there's a there's a double asterisk. So I think that double asterisk refers to... I'll tell you exactly what it refers to because I have it right okay. here. Okay. Uh, current markets where PlayStation Now is available: U.S., Canada, Netherlands, blah blah blah. Just a bunch of just all the countries that it's. Yeah. So yeah, you can all, you can only do it in these to, countries. But that leads to uh, underneath the prices for the premium tier, it says PlayStation Plus Deluxe. For markets that do not have cloud streaming, PlayStation Plus Deluxe will be offered at a lower price point compared to premium and include a catalog of beloved classic games. From the PS1, PS2, and PSP generations to download and play along with time-limited game trials. Benefits from the essential and extra tiers are also included. Local pricing will vary by market. So if you live in a country or a region that does not have PlayStation Now, you won't get the premium tier. You will get another tier called Deluxe where you will get access to everything but cloud streaming. Okay. Which I'm... I think is good and I think it's fair. Okay, so it says PlayStation 3 games are cloud streaming and that's it. And the other game yeah, other other consoles are available in both streaming and download. So does that Correct. mean they will does that mean every game will be available for download? Or does that mean there's going to be a mix of games that are going to be download or streaming? Not both. Uh I mean, this is leading me to believe it's both. Right. A catalog of beloved classic games available in both streaming and download. Yeah, but does that mean like the the catalog has a mixture of both? Or does that mean that you can do it either way? I don't think anyone's gotten clarification on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll see if I can find an answer. I'm sorry, how much does this cost for games you get? games for the same cost i don't know what you mean but <laughs> it's three tiers sixty dollars for the everything you already have and it doesn't change it looks like they didn't change anything um yeah. then there's uh extra which is a hundred dollars for the year and then premium which is 120 dollars for the year so for comparison game pass ultimate is 180 for the year it's 15 dollars a month right yeah the math Math is not our strong suit, but I did nope. the calculation, and it looks like it's $180. Yeah. Uh, so that this, even the highest tier is still cheaper than Game Pass. That is kind of a huge yeah. deal. Uh, also, uh, you can buy it for a year. <laughs> yeah. You can Actually, wait. Front, the premium tier is $18 a month, which is $2 more than Game Pass, but yes. you get a discount if you buy it for the year. So this yes. still gives... Like what you usually can do. Yeah, but you can't with Game Pass. So this gives Microsoft an opportunity to jump in and be like, hey, we're $2 cheaper, um, but if you want to do it for the year, we can match it. That would be great. Yeah. Um, I think... 
so far this looks like a great deal. Um yes. when do we know when this is coming out? I'd be more than happy to um, to to give them twice as much as I'm already giving them. <laughs> I don't think we got an a, an, a, an official date. So so the other oh, asterisk at the bottom PC streaming is not available in Japan at launch and will be supported huh. in the future. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, the article continues. The new extra and premium tiers represent a major evolution for PlayStation Plus. With these tiers, our key focus is to ensure that the hundreds of games we, we offer will include the best quality content that sets us apart. At launch, we plan to include titles such as Death Stranding, God of War, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, so both Spider-Man games, uh, Mortal Kombat 11, and Returnal. We are working closely with our imaginative developers from PlayStation Studios and third-party partners to include some of the best gaming experiences available with a library that will be regularly refreshed. More details to come on the games we'll have on our new PlayStation Plus service. When the new PlayStation Plus service launches... PlayStation Now will transition into the new PlayStation Plus offering and will no longer be available as a standalone service. PlayStation Now customers will migrate over to PS Plus Premium with no increase to their current subscription fees at launch. So if you are subscribed to PlayStation Now, when the rollover happens, you're going to roll over to PS Plus Premium, but you're going to keep the PS Plus prices you paid for now. So I guess I when your subscription's over, that's when you'll have to start paying the new prices. I don't understand you're going to keep the PlayStation Plus prices now. I don't understand that part. All right. So if you have PlayStation Now. Right. Say you're subscribed to PlayStation Now. That's a separate subscription from PlayStation Plus. How much yeah? is PlayStation Now? I don't know, but follow me here for a second. I'm, tr <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> if you're subscribed to PlayStation Now. Mm-hmm. When the change happens, they're going to roll you over to PlayStation Plus Premium. I understand that when, much. When that happens, you're not going to be charged any additional money. You're going to be charged what you were charged already for PlayStation Now. Mm -hmm. And I guess when that subscription is over, then you will have to pay the new fee. Okay, that doesn't... You said something about PlayStation Plus. Yeah, it's becoming PlayStation Plus Premium. Oh, and then you'll have to play the pay the new PlayStation Plus Premium fee. Yes, after okay, okay. your after your old PlayStation that, Now subscription expires. That makes sense. That okay. I understand. There you go. There you go. We're in sync, guys. So does that make sense that PlayStation Now is going to the premium tier? Are you getting a deal or are you getting screwed or is it a one-to-one? -one? I, I guess it's a one-to-one -one because PlayStation Now is offers pretty much everything in the premium tier. Right. Um. So it's just, you know, whatever the price is. It's $10 a month for PlayStation Now. $10 a month. Okay. So it's ten dollars a month for PlayStation Now plus whatever you play for PS Plus separately. That's true. Okay, so oh. it is a deal. Yeah. I mean, well, well, I mean, it's one to one if you only pay for PlayStation Now. Then it's a one to one. Yeah. But if you pay for both, right. you're just dropping the or, the essential plan and you're just migrating to place the premium. Mm hmm. So it's it's a it's good it's fine it's you're not yeah. losing anything it's totally fine. Uh, Ray Danny in the chat said June is when this is launching. Okay. Uh, right. this, we, this article leaves that out though. Yeah. Uh, as this is a massive launch effort, we are rolling out the new PlayStation Plus offering in a phased regional approach in the June time frame. <laughs> I just found that it. With the, with we'll time. begin with an initial <laughs> launch in several markets in Asia, followed by North America, Europe, and the rest of the world where PlayStation Plus is offered. We aim to, we aim to have the most PlayStation Network territories lie with our new PlayStation Plus game subscription service by the end of the first half of 2022. We also plan to expand our cloud streaming benefit to global to additional markets and will provide more details at a later date. Building upon more than 25 years of expertise in gaming innovation, this change to our subscription service 
highlights our continued efforts to evolve our network services business to match our customers' preferences. With the all new PlayStation Plus, we are focused on delivering a compelling game subscription service with curated content from our exclusive PlayStation Studios teams and our third party partners. The newly enhanced PlayStation Plus will enable our fans to discover and engage with more content than ever before and deepen their connection with the PlayStation community through shared experiences. We are providing an early look at the new PlayStation Plus subscription service today, and we plan on sharing more information with you as we get closer to launch. Stay tuned. Um, so it will be happening in... It's launching in June... That's the time frame, starting yes. with Asia, and they said they want to get it to the most to to most of the territories before the first half of 2022 is over. The first half of 2022 is over in June, <laughs> at the end yes. of June. So, um, hopefully, sometime randomly in June, we'll 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 get this. I'd assume yes. at the very end of June. <laughs> um. So. Here I go, spending another double what I already pay for PlayStation uh, Plus. Yeah. Even though I never even turn on my PlayStation. I'm going to be, uh, just because I'm a fan of video games, I'm going to be yeah. paying double what I already pay. Um, and well, hopefully the service is good. Well, I think, you know, as long as the games they're offering are worthwhile, I think that, you know, this could be a good... It's not a Game Pass killer, but it's a good alternative to it. I think it I think it has a huge possibility of being a Game Pass killer. Well, here's the thing. The one thing the one thing Game Pass has, well there's two things Game Pass has over this. Uh the first one is time. It's been out for a while. It already has mind share in the marketplace and it's matured to a point where people understand the concept and have used it in action playing games like Halo and Flight Simulator on Xbox, on phone, on PC, mm -hmm. all seamlessly. The second thing that Game Pass has over this is that Game Pass offers first-party Microsoft titles day and date mm -hmm. with retail release. When Halo came out, you can not only buy it for $60, for $70 in Target or on the Microsoft Store, if you had Game Pass, it was there. You just download it and it was there for $15 a month. And Sony will not be offering anything equivalent. God of War Ragnarok will not debut in play PlayStation Plus. Spider-Man 2 will not debut in PlayStation Plus. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge miss. It's a um, very big miss. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they announced that sometime in the future, though. If they're just like, hey, we figured it out. We're going to put our first party titles or at least even like a handful of first party titles. They don't even have to do all well, of them because I'm sure they have a lot. But if they just if they say the big ones like Ragnarok. That could be a huge deal. And that would get a lot well, of people here's onto the, the service. It's funny you say that because in an interview with, and I put this in the keep below this article in an interview with GameIndustry.biz, Jim Ryan talked about uh putting first party titles on PlayStation plus day and date. And he believes it would break, uh, putting, it would break the, uh, vir virtuous cycle that he, that he, uh, has been created with PlayStation right now. What the fuck In does that mean? Uh, according to Ryan, this cycle consists of Sony's investment in first party studios of producing success with, uh, which then enables more investment, which in turn fuels more success. Uh, it's this virtuous cycle PlayStation shouldn't break. And he believes that putting first party games on the service day one could break it. Quote Virtuous. This is a quote virtuous. For him. virtuous. Having or yeah. showing high moral standards. Yeah. The virtuous mission from Metal Gear Solid 3. High moral standards cycle that PlayStation has? PlayStation. This a moral standard cycle? This is the quote. This is his quote. Okay. In terms of putting our games into the service or any of our services upon their release, as you well know, this is not a road that, we are, that we've gone down in the past. And it's not a road we're going to go down. Uh, and it's not a road that we're going to go down with this new service. We feel if we were to do that, 
with the games we make at PlayStation Studios, that virtuous uh, cycle will be broken. The level of investment that we need to make in our studios would not be possible, and we think, and we think that the knock-on effect on the quality of the games that we make would not be something that gamers want. So let me translate that for you. No, he's a. <laughs> that's the answer. <laughs> that's the translation. Is no, we're not doing that. What he's saying is, he's afraid that if he if these they puts these games on PS Plus day one, then he's not going to see the same revenue that he might have seen had people gone out to the store to buy the game or download it directly from the PlayStation Store. It's that it's that old um, fear that like was brought up when Microsoft started doing this with Game Pass. How can they mm-hmm. afford to make a profit on these games if they're just giving them away for fifteen dollars a month? Yeah, well, they figured it out because they like, figured it out. Yeah, I, I almost never buy uh, first party games, <laughs> except for right. Nintendo. I buy every one that comes out. Um, I almost never buy first party games, but I have all of the subscriptions. <laughs> so like. Even though I would never buy these games, like I'm not buying Gears of War 6 or whatever the next one is, but I'm already paying for the subscription. I've played yeah. one for actually, no, I played two. I played two first party uh, Xbox games within the last year uh, Forza and Halo. And honestly, the only reasons I played those is because I had them with my Game Pass subscription. Halo, I would have bought, right. but Forza, I never would have bought that. Right. So, uh,. Why is this a virtuous cycle? <laughs> I think that's just... I think that's just, you know, something he came up with to make it sound good. It's not good. It's you not know? a good... It's not a good thing PlayStation's doing. <laughs> so that is the... That is what's keeping this from being a Game Pass killer, is that there's no yeah. first party day and day. Look, regardless stuff. of reason, regardless of reason, that's a big bullet point against yeah. the, this new PlayStation Plus. That and the PC yeah. compatibility. Um, you can do cloud stuff, but you're not going to be able to do anything more than that. And uh, Probably not, yeah. And... Xbox, I mean, it's Microsoft. You could basically get whatever game you want on PC. Like, like, like yeah. most of them are available. Um, so that's going to be a huge uh, uh, bullet point in favor of Microsoft. Yeah. Bullet points in favor of PlayStation. They have 740 games, <laughs> which is like really good. Um, yeah. It's also only $120 a year. I think that's a big reason yeah. to for Microsoft to cut their their uh the yearly subscription down a little bit. Even if it's just yeah. a little bit. $180 is way too much. It's way too much, yeah. especially no, now definitely. that PlayStation is offering something similar for a lot less. Yeah. Um So, I do I do also think it kind of sucks that they're gating off their back catalog of games, like all their their library of content yeah. behind like such a high paywall. Like granted, Nintendo is doing the same thing with Nintendo Switch Online, but that is a much I feel like that's a much more reasonable price. It's compared cheap. to this. It's yeah. cheap. And the games are and they're, it's cheap. There's less games, but the quality of game is really, really high. True. Yeah. So uh I can't even think of a friggin' uh PlayStation game that I like a retro PlayStation game that I want on here. I can't even think of. Oh, one. maybe you, the Metal Gear wanna, series. And then you that's don't want to play a round of Siphon Filter. <laughs> Definitely not. Burnout, maybe, but like, is that going to be on here? Well, Counterpoint Burnout Revenge is playable on Xbox One and Series X. Mm-hmm. Uh, Burnout Paradise is available on every system right now. Just so that's that. another good point. Xbox is really good at getting third parties involved with their subscription service. Yeah. I wonder if PlayStation is going to be the same because I feel like Microsoft probably gives them a sweet deal and I don't know if PlayStation would do that. I think they might because I think PlayStation has a better relationship with Japanese developers especially. Mm-hmm. So True. I think, you know, if, if they see Final Fantasy 16 
on PlayStation Plus and not Game Pass, I think that's going to be a big deal. You know, that'll that, sway a lot of people over. That's also a good point. This is going to be the uh, the Japanese equivalent. There's going to be a lot more yeah. uh, Nihongo no Gameu on here. Yes. Compared yeah. to Game Pass, which is mostly American stuff. I'd be surprised if yeah. anybody in Japan has Game Pass at all. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> You know, I think they tried because, like, Yakuza Like a Dragon debuted on Game Pass day and date. So I think they're, you know, they're trying. But, right. you know, Microsoft has never had the foothold in Japan that Sony and Nintendo had. Right. So if... I don't know if it's going to match Game Pass, but if it comes close, then I think this will take control of the Japanese market for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think this is going to be incredibly successful. Uh, but... As it stands, there seems to be a pretty good reason to own both of this and Game Pass. Yeah. Uh, it depends on... There's a lot of questions we have. What's the PlayStation's relationship going to be like with third parties? Um, how is the PC experience going to be? Uh, what exactly games are going to be on there at all? Um, and what are they going to add going forward? Yeah. So... Uh. I guess we'll have to see. I'm glad they're doing something like this. I'm glad they nuked PlayStation now because uh, yeah. that wasn't doing too hot uh, because the stigma was bad. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad it's pretty cheap. Like $120 is not cheap, but compared to Game Pass, it's very, very cheap. Yeah, I, so. I think it's very competitively priced, I think. you know, I'm surprised by that. Once, Because you think about it, $120 for like 700 games, that's a steal. Right. You know, especially, you know, once we know what the window is between when a game launches and when it can come to PS Plus, I think that, you know, that'll help the value, you know, people see the value in the service. Right. Yeah, I'm surprised that they did it so cheap. Uh, and I'm surprised that there's so many games on it. Uh, I thought yeah. they were going to be uh, weird and stingy about it, but uh, but it seems so far it seems good. I'm I'm interested and I'm I'm willing to give it a shot. Um. Anyway, what does the chat think? Yeah. Uh, we got notifications from Luabic with three months in a row. Oh, I'm sorry, thirteen months. Good evening, Wolf Bros. You'll be pleased to hear that I finally own a desk to put my Wolf Den desk mat on. <laughs> Exclamation point! Wolf Den yeah. apparel. Baby. No exclamation point! Apparel. Get yourself a Wolf Den desk mat, and also a shirt and a hoodie. We got everything now. Yeah, we got new shirts. Uh, M S M Schroeder, thank you for the eighteen months. I appreciate it. Uh, Pitcher, thank you for the Prime. Wolf, thank you for the Prime. Tech Nanner, thank you for the Hundo Bits. Learning mode engaged. Yes, that was glasses, yeah. Bob. Sarge, thanks for the 37 months. And Luke Antone, thank you for the 29 months. Uh, okay. What else do we got here? Uh, 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 Estridian says, but in reality, you don't play at 700 games a year. It's great to have a bit of catalog, of course. But after a point, the relation between the amount and the price is just for show. So there's two things with that. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, it could be 700 terrible games. <laughs> but the more games, the more chance that there's going to be some good ones in there. Yes. And if you think about it, $120 a year, $120 is the price of two AAA games. So if you only, if you only buy two AAA games a year, for that same price, you're getting an entire library of content. Right. You know, ranging from cool indie stuff to like AAA titles. Granted, it's older stuff, but you know, there's still a lot of value in that. Yeah. Yes, you will never play 700 games in a year, but you're you're bound to find 120 dollars worth of value. Okay, uh, we can move on. Believe yes. it or not. Uh, we could talk about the new sequel to the Breath of the Wild news. Yes. It's delayed. <laughs> wow. Uh, I can't believe Who it. saw this coming? I wanted to, I want to know 
a list of all of the Zelda games that have been delayed. Because it's almost all of the 3D ones, but it's not all of them. It's certainly all the 3D ones. I don't know about any of the 2D ones. It is all of the new ones? Because every article I see says almost. And I remember saying it was all of the 3D ones and getting in trouble for it. I don't... I cannot think of a single 3D Zelda game that, unless you're talking about the handheld ones, like uh, Spirit Tracks or Phantom Hourglass, but I mean like the big ones. Ocarina of Time was delayed. Majora's Mask was delayed. Wind Waker was delayed. Chat's saying Majora's Mask wasn't delayed. Majora's Mask was delayed. Majora's Mask was supposed to be a much smaller game than it was. Am I going to get yelled at if I say all the 3D Zeldas have been delayed? That's all I want to know. Are, are any of you in the chat? Can we all agree? Is anybody in the chat going to yell at me if I say that? But anyway, everybody knew this fucking game was going to be delayed. Yeah. So they came out today and they said, hey, guys, sorry about it. We're, we're coming out in spring now, 2023. Sorry about it. They're very... um. They're very formal and courteous with their announcement of their delays between this and the uh, the Metroid delay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They just came out with like a video. They took the time to make a video and say, listen, we're going to have to delay this game. We are very sorry, but we are doing everything we can to make sure this is the best game possible. Uh, Instead, uh, you know, usually just get like a, like a press release. Hey, the game's delayed. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, the... The other formal one it was always Cyberpunk. It was just a friggin' text thing. But in this case, we got a video of of the devs saying sorry about it, and we also got a couple of like a couple of screens, like a little little bit of some more tease. Yes. Uh, I think the big te- the big tease, or the big uh, rumor killer, is that. For the longest time, we saw the player character from behind, and they just had long hair. And I know, I know you especially, Bob. You thought it, this could possibly be you're playing as Zelda herself. Turns out, no, I, it's Link. I, I didn't think it was Zelda herself. I thought something was fucked up with his face. I thought because uh, he has a we- he has that arm. Like it looks like something happens. He gets into to a weird fight with that with that decrepit looking Ganon, and then he. Gets yeah. this weird arm. I thought like half of his face was gonna be like like the arm or something. Like he was gonna be yeah. uh, freaking uh, uh, like like I thought he was gonna be deformed in some way. <laughs> uh, where are the screen? This video is only a minute and a half long. Is this where the screen is? I, I actually did not watch this. Yeah, yeah, it's in here. Okay, so there's, there's just some new footage. Uh, it's, I mean, it's not he, a lot, but it's enough. <laughs> he has weird nails as well. Something is definitely happened. Well, we knew, we know something happened. He freaking got into a little scuff with Gan. Oh, there's his face. It's just straight up his face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the big news here is that the master sword is messed up. Yes. It's like broken and stuff. People are making jokes about how uh, uh, the weapon degradation is. It happened to the Master Sword finally. <laughs> well, I mean, there's weapon degradation to the Master Sword in Breath of the Wild already, isn't there? No, I think the Master Sword is forever, isn't it? Is that's the whole deal with the Master Sword? Is that's why you want it? Or is that the Hylian Shield can break and you have to keep going back to the same forest to get it? The Hylian Shield, I believe, you can break. Oh, oh, the yeah. the Master Sword needs to charge. Okay. So you can break it, but it just you need to just give it a second to rest, I yeah. guess. <laughs> that was Will's favorite part of Breath of the Wild. I, I mean, like I I finally had a Zelda game I was into, but man, you found a way to annoy me with it. I get why they did it. Like, it's it's a way to get you to use all of the weapons in the game. Uh, but they could have eased up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Or give you something after a while to make it so that, like, enchant them so that they can't break after a while. Because, like, once you yeah. play the game for, like, 300 hours, you don't need to try all of the weapons anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, where's his nails? His nails look uh, fine. When he grabs 
when he grabs the sword. He grabs it with his uh with his messed up hand, his his arm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. We just get him touching the master sword. We get a view of the master sword, and that's it. Master yeah. sword's all messed up. Maybe something will happen with it. Who knows? Maybe yeah. they're fixing the whole weapon degradation thing. I don't know. Maybe you bring it to well, one of these little I, he, areas and you enchant it. I don't know. Alan Newman said that the game is getting much bigger in scope because it's not just, you know, the entirety of the Breath of the Wild map, but it's also the sky. And he said, I think he says, and beyond. So I think that might also mean the sea. Space. Or something. Oh, the sea. Space. <laughs> Uh, Kate says, and he's got that the BB Triforce in his hand, like a little Triforce, like a baby Triforce. It's glowing. I think yeah. you see it when he reaches for it. I saw a screenshot on Twitter of it. He's got something in his hand. I mean, he's probably got. It probably gives him new abilities and stuff. Um, yeah. In in Breath of the Wild, you hit the what left bumper and you get all you get like the bomb and 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 the freaking magnet and whatever i'm sure there's some arm abilities yeah. instead um so we got like a small tease of what's happening we still don't know the freaking name of this game it's still called yeah. sequel to the legend of zelda breath of the wild i really hope well, that's we, not the name <laughs> well didn't we not know what breath of the wild was going to be called until like a year before the game came out <laughs> i don't know yeah, it took a, it took a while for them to tell us what Breath of the Wild was going to be called. What was uh, the code name? What did they tell us it was? Because we we knew uh, there was trailers years before that game came out. I think it was just called The Legend of Zelda Wii U, because we didn't oh. even know it was going to be on the Switch. Interesting. Apparently, it's his Triforce piece that's in the it's in the hand. This is the first time he's had it not this is the first time he's had it in the beginning of the game. Okay. This is the first time he's had it not at the very beginning of the game. You mean this is the first time he's had it at the beginning of the game, which makes sense. Yes. Um, to be honest, they announced Pokemon coming out holidays this year. I just assumed they were going to delay Breath of the Wild. See, I I assume they were going to delay Breath of the Wild because they always delay Zelda games. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that there's a bunch of first party Nintendo games coming out this year means nothing. Yeah. Cuz 2017 we got Zelda and Mario. They did not have to do that. <laughs> they could have waited yeah. on one of them. Uh did we also get a Pokémon? No, we didn't. We got a Pokémon no. for a 3DS, I think, in 2017. Yeah. I think we did, yeah. I think it was like Ultra Sun and Moon, though. That like doesn't really count. Uh, I'm trying to look and see yeah, when they announced Yeah, it was Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon in 2017. I'm trying to look to see when they called it Breath of the Wild. But I'm not, not getting a definitive answer. Brock Rock says, I mean, yeah, we haven't seen anything with Zelda yet. So, yeah, imagine it would be delayed. What does that have to do with anything? I don't think we saw <laughs> Zelda at all for the for the Wii U yeah. one. Uh, Breath of the Wild was originally planned for a 2015 release on a Wii U on the Wii U, but was delayed twice. Eventually releasing in March 2017. They basically delayed it first to work on it, and then they just finished it and sat on it for like a year. <laughs> um, Luke Antone, thank you for the 29 months. I think I said that already. Um, but I mean, we could wait. There's this year's so packed. There's so much yeah. shit coming out this year. Bayonetta, um, Pokemon, Sonic, Sonic Frontiers, Sonic Frontiers. Everybody's <laughs> waiting for that. Kirby just favorite, came out. My favorite was like people on Twitter were like, "Yo, you know they delayed Breath of the Wild too because Sonic Frontiers is coming out at the same time. <laughs> they don't want to mess with that open world Sonic. They don't know Sonic, could Sonic Breath out. of the Wild." Splatoon 3 also coming out this year. Like, there's a lot yeah. of first-party stuff coming out this year. But again, I don't think that's that would be a deterrent. The only deterrent, the only reason I think they delayed Zelda is because they always freaking delay Zelda. Yeah. 
Uh, anyway, that's all the news for this friggin' uh, Zelda delay. We got uh, five seconds of footage, and yeah, uh, Al Numa saying, uh, "Sorry." Yeah. I mean, so. th- there's really not much to say about the game except that it's been delayed. You know, right. um, and I think people are surprised by it, even though they shouldn't be. Um, I get, but I guess like for a minute there, it really did seem like they were going to come out with it this year. Yeah. I mean, uh, a lot of, it's been a while. It's been, I mean, it's been five years. The launch of the switch. Yeah. It's been five years since breath of the wild came out. It will be six when this game comes out. That's a long time. Um, and there's a lot of first party games coming out this year. So, uh, I I also I was like I don't want to say I was fifty fifty on it because I knew that they always freaking delay these types of games, but yeah. uh yeah I'm not surprised but also I, I I could have seen them releasing it this year, right? Uh, Brock Rock says they did know they did do DLC for Breath of the Wild. Yeah, that's true. They did. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, more Nintendo stuff to talk about. Yeah, this this, this upsets time, me. Nintendo stuff. This upsets me greatly. Uh, okay, so previously, uh, images were shared from the Super Mario sixty four Complete Clear Guide book, a tome released in Japan alongside the game. It was notable for the fact that instead of telling players where to go, a series of incredible real world dioramas were commissioned to serve as three D maps. Uh, it was cool, and everybody enjoyed it. To be clear, this book was released in 1996 in Japan. It was never released in the West um, and has never been released anywhere else and has not been commercially available for decades. The only way uh, that you can purchase a copy if you have the cash is to spend hundreds on one via a a resale on eBay or Yahoo from which Nintendo won't see any proceeds. Oh, and of the scans that you won't pay a cent for. Uh, It would have been the easiest thing in the world for Nintendo to leave this be to let Mario fans enjoy this thing that they never had the chance to enjoy before. Having high quality scans uploaded to the public domain uh, wasn't just for a recreation either. It was preserving the book's content and making them publicly accessible long before the opportunity to purchase the book directly had disappeared. But no, Nintendo of America has sent a takedown notice earlier today to the Internet Archive where the scans were being hosted, uh, who who then passed it into these who then passed it into the scans uploader Comfort Food Video Games. Uh, Comfort Food Video Games sent this statement after the takedown, which pretty much sums up the whole situation uh, per the statement. Sadly, archive.org sent me this their usual takedown notice email telling me Nintendo of America challenged the copyright of the scan and it was removed. Frankly, I'd love to challenge the legitimacy of that and how Nintendo of America would have anything to do with a Nintendo of Japan licensed gem book guide from 1995, but I really, but I can't really fight the Nintendo legal team here. It's incredibly disappointing. Uh, While I fully understand protecting one's IP and copyrights, I don't think that I was hurting anyone by scanning and uploading a 27-year-old guide that is extremely out of print. Truthfully, I think it helps Nintendo. Truthfully, I think it helps Nintendo while only hurting the people selling this guide for literal hundreds of dollars. All I wanted to do was spread my love of this incredible guide to a larger extent, uh, and to a larger extent, my love for the company. I'm a rookie to the video game preservation scene, but I can't think of anything more depressing than how it's a bunch of hardworking people spending their free time and money painstakingly archiving and preserving history while major corporations like Nintendo are doing nothing to help. In fact, it they're actively hindering the cause. I thought I did a quote tweet of the um of the scanned pages, or at least the most important ones, and I can't find it. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about this on the show. Um, it, it, yeah, it, we showed cl- we showed pages of it on the show. Oh, wait, that's right. I can just go to the past episode. Um, yeah, they uh, it, it was gorgeous. It was awesome. It was like really exciting. They had really cool uh, like dioramas that they built for each yeah, like world of Mario sixty four dioramas. Yeah, 
and it was incredible. Uh, it was awesome to see. Uh, I'm glad yeah. somebody scanned them and put them up. So it was cool to look through. Um, this is it, actually. I have it on. Uh, Shut next. up, old Bob. <laughs> this is uh, episode 72. You can go to the description to get to a timestamp. There it is. This is the archive. Um, it's beautiful. They built these little dioramas that look just like the level. Uh, and it's like a little level map. Um, it's gorgeous. And it's all in Japanese, so you can't really yeah. read it. But um, it, it's it's the visuals that, that you want. Um, so, yeah, it was awesome looking through it. There's Samui Samui Mountain, which means cold, cold mountain. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then they took this freaking thing down. Like, this is, this is like... Are they? Is Nintendo gonna go around to libraries and like take their players' guides out of the library because that's copyright infringement? I'm trying to find it. I think it was the Washington Post. They did an article about game preservation mm -hmm. and how it really is the work of a select few independent people trying to preserve not just you know games they like, but all games, video game history in general, and how. Video game companies, not just Nintendo, but a lot of video game companies seem to go out of their way to make sure that gaming history is not preserved in any capacity. Yeah. It's a, it's this great push because they they act like they they still can make a profit off of these titles when they don't or they can't. And yeah. you know, letting a library have a copy of super Mario brothers for other people to access it should not be a problem, but it is a problem because they, Nintendo still exerts their copyright claim over it. So, so, so I'm not trying to justify it because I think it's wrong, but in mm -hmm. Nintendo's uh, feeble little mind, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the same thing oh, was... with, with Disney uh, that yeah. they, they, put a stranglehold on their content so that when they do release something that all the fans are thirsting for it. You know, they want yeah. to get their hands all over. Oh my God. You mean I can play Mario 64 finally on my Nintendo <laughs> switch and everybody goes nuts, you know, yeah. even though we've been playing it for years on the computer. Um, it's just disappointing that that's the way that they think. It's disappointing yeah. that they're so like I don't mind a little bit of that because I understand they want the the right. they want their IP to be worth a lot. Um, and I get it when they release Mario sixty four. I want that every time they release it because it's a different type and it's a different way to play the game every time. But a uh, fucking was, player's guide that yeah. is twenty seven years old, out of print, and was and never made it to the states. I want to see guy, that. And like. You can look up players guides for Mario 64 all around the internet. There are a million places for you to look up players guides for Mario 64 in languages you understand. This was not about that. This was just about showing the cool artwork inside the book. Right. Yeah, it, it like the the con like the, I mean it's the content of the book is the cool artwork that's why we yeah. want a piece of it and they're not selling that like sell it to me then <laughs> if you if yeah. you're gonna copyright strike it's beautiful yeah, artwork yeah. that is being lost to time that's gonna just be buried because you don't want to give that content out if yeah. you're gonna fucking copyright strike it then give it to me in another way you know yeah like I don't care uh, like I don't need it for free I'll give you five bucks for it but give it to me. The article I was thinking of was by The Verge, and according to them, video game archivists and uh, preservationists have to contend with the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, the DMCA, specifically Section 1201. Section 1201 states uh, it makes it unlawful to circumvent technolo technological measures used to prevent unauthorized access to copyrighted work, including books, movies, video games, and computer software. And this is the analogy they use. Imagine a video game trapped inside a burning building and on the door of that building <laughs> is a lock. Video game preservationists want to rescue the game before it goes up in flames, but in order to get to it, they have to break the lock. Section 1201 
essentially states that even though all the archivists want to do is get the game out before it burns, if they break the lock, they break the law. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. They're saying that yeah. um, they need to basically rip the game yeah. before it's unavailable. <laughs> and the law would be making that illegal to rip the game. Yeah. Yeah, um, and most and most museums and libraries, you know, places that would archive this stuff, don't want to go through the legal hassle of having to do that. I think there is an exception uh, to Section twelve hundred one for certain kinds of computer software, but not video games. And specifically, the reason why it's not video games is because the ESA. The Electronic Software Association. Oh, we love them. The people who run the people who run Bob's favorite convention, E3, basically lobbied to make sure that video games were excluded from that. I mean, the the games preservationists and and you know like uh, uh, homebrew people and 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 like the retro game community has been making great strides in uh, in in the technology to rip games. Like uh, there's those. Game Boy uh, uh, cartridge readers that I've done, yeah. had in videos before, uh, which do a great job. Uh, I just learned how to do it on a 3DS, and it's uh, it it looks very easy. Unfortunately, it's not easy on all consoles. Um, yes, and and it's it 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 takes uh, a labor of love from some fans in order to yes. get that to happen. It's not something that a company would, would allow us to do. What would be crazy is if Microsoft was just like, hey, these games are, are not going to be available uh, pretty soon. Here's a tool to rip Xbox and Xbox 360 games to your computer. Yeah, That would be insane if they did that. That would be a smack in the face to the ESA and a lot of other game companies. And they're the only ones who I could see doing that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, though, all these other game companies, the monopoly of game companies, uh, what do you call the triopoly? The, 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 the three big ones, they're going to prevent uh, us from being able to have our retro game libraries. In oligopoly, I know I pronounced that wrong. Uh, but it's like what the cable companies are. It's not a monopoly, but there's only like a select few of them, and they essentially control the entire yeah. industry. Yeah. When are we going to get rid of the ESA? We're like close, right? We're like very close to just abolishing the ESA. I think the ESA served their purpose when they got video games the same free speech rights that movies and like other forms of art have. After that, all they've really been is just a hindrance for the consumer. Right. You know, so. Uh, I think they're in hot water for some abuse uh, scandals right now. Um, Probably. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if they, they're on their way out within the next couple of years. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we can move on to more fun game company news. Once we thank Game of Rones for the seven months. Happy seven months, boys. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, more fun video game news with game with big and major game companies just doing the right thing, Will. Charging you stuff. Yeah, just, just <laughs> squeezing the most out of they can to their beloved fans. Uh, introducing GTA Plus for GTA Online, a new pa uh, player membership delivering exclusive benefits and more. Uh, now available on PlayStation Plus. Uh, I'm sorry, now available on the PlayStation Store, uh, on PS5, or the Microsoft Store. Wow. Uh, G GTA Plus is a new membership program exclusively for GTA Online on the PS5 and Xbox Series X and N S. Uh, launching today. And providing easy access to a range of valuable benefits for both new and long-standing players uh, on the la latest generation of consoles. Being a GTA Plus member gets you a reoccurring monthly uh, GTA bucks, uh, 500,000 500, GTA bucks directly deposited Whoa. into your Maze bank account, uh, plus the opportunity to claim properties in and around Los Santos. 
that unlock gameplay updates that you may have missed out on, special vehicle upgrades, members only discounts, more GTA bucks and RP bonuses, and more and more each month. Uh, here's a breakdown of the benefits members will receive for the first month of membership. Uh, the $500,000 GTA bucks are automatically put into your account. Uh, the principal divest eight, uh, along with a complimentary house special works upgrade. Uh, this is just a bunch of crap. Auto shop yeah, we don't located have to read in. Everything. Yeah, okay. Uh, blah blah blah. GTA Plus members can also take advantage of uh, special GTA Plus shark cards that provide extra bonus cash from the PlayStation Store on PS5 or the Microsoft Store. Every month, GTA Plus uh, will pro will deliver a new set of exclusive rewards for members to claim. Just go to the Legendary Motorsport House Special Works Maze Bank uh, foreclosures, Doc Tees, I get it, and other stores found in GTA Online web browser to obtain uh, to obtain and enjoy each period's members' benefits before they expire. And all GTA Plus benefits are provided in addition to our regular GTA Online events, which will continue as normal for all players. Sign up for just $6 a month starting on March 29th via the PlayStation Store or, P or the Microsoft Store, and you can cancel anytime. Stay tuned to the Rockstar Newswire and the official GTA Online website for each month's GTA Plus special benefits. So we've talked about Grand Theft Auto V very recently because it was coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X yes. uh, for a rather exorbitant fee. Yes, um, and to upgrade to if you have the last gen version, you want to upgrade to the new gen version. You had to pay an exorbitant fee. So it's cheaper on PlayStation, right? Is that mm -hmm. what we determined last time? Uh yeah, cheaper to upgrade on PlayStation right now. Yeah. Uh, so if I want to just okay, so it, how is the game just sixty dollars? If I want it on my PlayStation Five, is it just sixty dollars? Or is it I think so? Than... I can't find it on the PlayStation Store. So here, here's so the I'm thing. I'm looking, I'm looking right at it. I can't freaking find it. If you own it on play, it, here's a, in order to get the next gen version of GTA Five, you have to buy the game again, like straight up. <laughs> Currently, <laughs> if you have if you have it on PS4 and you want the PS5 version, they're offering you a discount for a limited time, and that discount is cheaper on PlayStation than it is. On Xbox. Okay, so 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 it says Grand Theft Auto V unavailable for PS4. Can't get it. Not a thing. <laughs> you have to get the premium edition, which is only thirty dollars. Okay. But that's for PlayStation Four. Right. So I want to I want to fucking upgrade it. <laughs> there's there's to... no there's no filter for a search for. GTA for on PS5? No. No, this website sucks. Oh, wait, PlayStation 5. Then I'm just here. Upgraded for PlayStation 5? I don't see a Grand Theft Auto. It should be like right at the top because it's yeah. brand new. No, they don't, they don't want you to know. Search Grand Theft Auto 5. Okay, you got it, boss. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 5. It's the first thing? Oh no, this is the no no no, this is the trilogy. This is the wrong thing. Uh Premium Edition. Yeah, it's not here. Interesting. So it's not an upgrade, it's its own game. But, yeah, that's what I was. That's so what I'm trying where to Where is it? You should be able to just buy the game on its own for PlayStation Five. That's so weird. Is it on Xbox? That's what I'm looking the for Xbox right store? now. PS Five is ten dollars. Xbox is twenty dollars. Says Khalil Jama. Yes, that's as of right now. Once that's once this is over, was that this promotional period is over? And you want to upgrade, you're going to have to pay the full retail price. Uh, okay, so here it is. It says now $20 for Xbox, but it it looks like that's just the price of it. It looks like I don't have to upgrade. It looks like I just get that. 
Oh, is it because it's huh. in Game Pass? Maybe. Does it know that I'm logged in? I'm not. I'm not logged in. Well, then I don't know. <laughs> All right. So at minimum, this stupid game is $20 on Xbox. Yeah. Uh, then you have to have Xbox Live if you want to go online. Yeah. So that's another how much a month? Let's say ten dollars. I don't know. Then you have to pay an additional six dollars for this GTA Plus. Yeah. So in case they weren't squeezing you enough, but I mean, I guess there's people who do spend a lot of money, like in-game money. So like, I mean, it'll be good for them, I guess. <sighs> Grand Theft Auto Five has proven itself to be a forever game. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is a ten year old game right now, and people have been playing it. They've been rebuying it and playing it, you know, for the past ten years. This game has had legs like no no one else has seen, to the point where we didn't get a Grand Theft Auto Six this console generation. Ultra we just got a port of the last game. Ultra Fiore in the chat says, "Buy it, Bob. It's a great game. I know it's a great game. I played it nine years ago." And it was good. And then they immediately launched it for the next generation system. And I said, yeah. I'm not paying $60 again. I just played through the game. And then it lasted forever. And I was salty that I bought it on PlayStation 3 to begin with. So I never got into the online. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like for me, I feel like enough time has passed where if I wanted to play Grand Theft Auto 5, I could and I wouldn't have a bad experience with it. But. Man, this is up the their like upgrade plan to the next gen of consoles just like turned me off completely when other people are offering much easier solutions for upgrading. Uh and now this, like I just don't understand why this is like GTA Plus is a thing. I don't understand what the need for it is. It's for the whales, the guys who sit in GTA five online like it's second life and who spend a lot of money. People in the chat I were guess. saying 500000 isn't a lot in the game. Sounds I'd like imagine not. Oh, uh, yeah, it sounds like a lot because, you know, we're poor. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, in, yeah, because video game money, like, works like that. You know, I'm playing Saints Row right now, Saints Row 4 on the Switch right now, and the first upgrade to your handgun only costs 100 bucks, but the second costs $2,000. <laughs> You know, it's a huge jump. I was talking to our buddy Jerry, and he said, yes. I bought $5 in Shiba coin. Now I have $3 million. And I said, $3 million Shiba coin, right? <laughs> and he said, yes. So then I said, oh, that's crazy. I have, five, I have 50 billion Bob bucks. And then I wrote on a piece of loose leaf paper, 50 billion, and then took a screenshot of it and sent it to him. Because it fucking means nothing. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I guess you could buy a lot of cars and shit in the game. I'm not knocking people who spend money on virtual currency because I just spent like yeah. a lot of money on Valorant skins because I thought they looked cool and I play a lot of Valorant now. Um, so I'm not knocking that. I just think this is really scummy. Because they're already asking for a lot of money from people. They were already in the news a week ago for their shitty uh, upgrade practices. And now here they are asking for an additional $6 a month from, from fans who play the game often. I guess it's optional, so it's not a big deal. But um, yeah, it's still kind of scummy. Yeah, and I mean, like, Grand Theft Auto V is already, like, one of, if not the best-selling video game of all time. Like, they, Rockstar has made so much money off of this. They don't have to make another game for, like, another 20 years. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. I just don't see... I don't see what the benefit of GTA Plus adds to GTA Online. Unless you in the chat play GTA Online religiously and you see the benefits of this, let me know. Otherwise, I, I don't I don't get it. Looks like you get cool shit. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Then why wasn't this implemented like earlier? 
Because they're why wasn't this implemented because they need when? they need new cool ways to squeeze the money out of the <laughs> out of the people who are already playing the game. Yeah, the revenue stream died up. They realized everybody who bought GTA Five bought GTA Five. Um. Anyway, uh, next news. Speaking of, well, first of all, thank you, Griff Jen, for the prime and taking shape for the sixteen months. I appreciate it. Uh, speaking of games preservation. Oh, this is games preservation or just games lunacy? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, this is lunacy. I thought this was talking about uh, the eShop closure. So, uh, uh, full disclosure, before we get into this. Yes. I've been fucking around with a 3DS for the past two days. Um, yeah. Because somebody in my chat, uh, I have it. I have a clip of it somewhere. So I asked the chat for... Uh, video ideas and someone mm. said mod a 3ds and i was i'm so sick of hearing that i was like that's actually a good idea though <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> so then i did it and it was actually really easy um yeah yeah i'm sick of people telling me it's a it's a better way to emulate games instead of just buying a portable emulator because the portable emulators do it easier and better yeah um if the portable emulators were built for that <laughs> but if all you have is if you already have a 3ds and you want to emulate some shit, it's not a bad idea. It doesn't nuke your 3DS either. I could still play all of my ambassador program games. Uh, and it's oh, connected cool. to the internet. So yeah, uh, yeah it's still it it's it does it nice. you're good. You're good to go. Yeah. Especially now that they're basically canceling the eShop and, and the updates yes. for the 3DS. Uh mm -hmm. you can expect that your Nintendo account will still be there. Yeah. Anyway. So, Australian indie de developer Gerald Doulet has announced that he's bringing seven new titles to the Wii U and 3DS eShops this year, despite the fact that Nintendo is closing the digital storefronts for the two systems. In a press release, Doulet states that the move was in response to the news of the closure and significant fan demand for the games. Here is his statement. Interesting. We, ha we have announced seven new titles to launch exclusively on the... Wii U and 3DS. What? Why? In response to Nintendo's recent announcement of the end of the eShop sales for Wii U and 3DS, and as a result of significant fan demand, we are bringing seven final games to these consoles. Most of these titles were games that we had in development for Wii U and 3DS already, but either moved main development to the Switch or canceled entirely. After some discussion with Nintendo, we organized... Uh, we organized bringing these titles back to the Wii U and 3DS as a way to celebrate those consoles and the eShop. So, the seven games are Silver Falls White Inside Its Umbra, Silver Falls Gaiden, Silver Falls Undertakers, those are all for the Wii U, uh, Silver Falls Guardians and Metal Exterminators, Silver Falls Ghoul Busters, Sil Silver Falls Vicarious Brothers and Silver Falls Gaiden Deathly Delusions Destroyers. Those are for the 3DS. That's too many games for one guy. And also, Silver Falls Gaiden is the Resident Evil Gaiden logo, right? Yes, it is. I'm, I'm pretty sure these are all uh, like uh, like parodies of like other. Correct. Yeah. I'm wondering what the uh, significance is. Uh, White Inside Its Umbra was shown off earlier this year and ah. seeks to include Wii balance board support. I remember this. The Silver Falls series all takes place within the same fictional town. It's all There's also no solid release date or pricing for these games yet, but Dulay states that the, fir the first should be released in Q2 2022. This was a good... Uh marketing situation yes it was, this was a very good idea to, to i don't know if yeah. seven games was the play if he just did <laughs> two i feel like he would have gotten just as much eyeballs on it seven yeah. is just seven he's is trying extra. to kill himself <laughs> it's it's extra yeah but good for him uh good for I'm him. Glad, i mean i'm it, glad it, he's doing it it is a claim to fame to yeah. be the last seven games released on the Wii U and 3DS, respectively. Right. I think 
it definitely it definitely getting eyes to your games uh cuz i don't know anybody who would have wanted to play white inside its umbra <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also like I, I i'm assuming these aren't going to live on the store that long i mean the stores no. are shutting down for purchasing in 2023 correct like early 2023 yes. so yes so yeah you have a limited time to go out and buy these games <laughs> And they, he's submitting them to the stores. Yeah. So they're not going to be available for a while. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's going to be a very short window where you can actually get these games on your 3DS or, yeah. or, or Wii U. Um, this isn't unheard of, though, to have uh, games released for dying consoles. Um, there were games yeah. releasing for the Vita for like a really long time. Uh, yeah. A uh, lot of, there's remember- a lot of devs who still launch games on the Dreamcast. Yes. Uh, I know the guy who developed uh, Retro City Rampage. Like he goes out of his way to develop games for older, like dead systems. Mm-hmm. Like he ported his most recent game to the PlayStation Three. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So this is cool. I'm 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 glad he's doing it, and I hope he doesn't uh, work too hard yeah. on it because he's got he's got a freaking <laughs> grind right now. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, this is the last news we got today. Yes, not a lot of news, but there was a lot to talk about with this news, and I think this will affect you, Bob, because it's about Warzone. Uh, Call of Duty Warzone can't have more maps because install sizes are fucking crazy. I agree. Keep it small. Well, don't, because we need new content. Caldera ain't it. All right, continue. Uh, okay. (laughs) Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but Call of Duty Warzone is big. For a while, it was so big, it consumed over 200 gigs of my PC's SSD. This is the, the writer talking. Uh, conditions have improved over two years of optimizations. Warzone is currently 80 gigs. Uh, but Warzone's hunger for disk space, disk space, disk space, <laughs> not disk space, is apparently holding back, holding it back from adding, uh, from adding a feature increasingly common among Battle Royales, map rotation. In a recent interview with streamer TP, uh, Call of Duty Live Operations lead Josh Bridge addressed the biggest issue currently facing Warzone and hinted at its future. Uh, Following an update this week that increased player health from 100 to 150, a radical change from the game's meta, TP asked about the possibility of other major changes like like a map pool that would cycle between uh, Cauldra and other... Sorry, Caldera and the older Verdansk Caldera. map. Caldera and the older Verdansk map that it replaced in December. Uh, Bridge said it's not really possible for the current iteration of Warzone, and his explanation was surprisingly candid. We want that. We we all want that. There's a technical problem. The install and reinstall sizes are fucking crazy, Bridge said. <laughs> Activision is understandably hesitant to push the game's install size too far over the edge especially while the majority of its player base still lives on last-gen PS4 and Xbox Ones, some of which are constrained to just a 500-gig hard drive. Uh, Bridge noted that every time Warzone receives a major map update that requires huge downloads, we lose players. I get it. If I get if I had to download 50 more gigs tomorrow just to get uh, Verdansk back, I might just uninstall next time I want to play. I've come close. For daily Warzone players, though, the limitation is frustrating in the face of similar games that have no problem supporting multiple maps. Apex Legends currently has three of its four maps on hourly rotations and manages to match Warzone's 80 gigs almost exactly. PUBG updates its five pool, the five map pool seasonally and only requires 30 gigs. Hunt Showdown uses its 30 gigs on three small uh one kilometer by one kilometer maps that never rotate out of the game. Fortnite only has one map, but Epic changes it so often it never it's never the same map for long. Uh it, it isn't to say that developer Raven software is missing some obvious tricks to make Warzone's map fit. Uh most of the games mentioned run on completely different engines with various art styles. Modern Warfare, the game that Warzone is built on top of, uh has a photo real art style and a server that 
a photoreal art style that served the 6v6 arena FPS well, but wasn't developed with years of Warzone updates in mind. Bridge said Activision didn't expect Warzone to take off the way it did and has spent the time since working on an imperfect development pipeline. Put another way, Verdansk was never authored with the idea that 180 weapons were going to be added to it. Uh, by the sound of it, Raven and Co. are more or less stuck with the technology base it currently has, at least until the mysterious Warzone sequel comes out sometime next year. For now, Bridge describes map rotation as a goal for Warzone, but not something that's currently in reach. I, I thought regarding the I Sorry. thought it was this year, the Warzone sequel. I thought it was rumored that this year's Call of Duty was delayed, and then and then Activision said, "No, it's coming." Yeah, no. Next year's Call of Duty is next year's Call of Duty is delayed. The twenty twenty three Warzone twenty twenty three Call of Duty is delayed. This year's is still allegedly on the cards for yeah but i thought this year's was the warzone sequel i think it is this article just said next year's warzone sequel when did that happen uh i don't know call of duty warzone 2 is real and it's developed by infinity ward uh activision also confirmed that this year's call of duty game is a modern warfare sequel yeah uh, both Modern uh, Warfare 2, 2022 and the next Warzone, which isn't actually referred to as Warzone 2 in the update, but seems like a full sequel, are being developed on a, on a new engine. Yeah, so they just this article says this year. I think the rumors are so heavy that this year's Call of Duty is delayed that they're just saying next year's. They're just calling it next year's okay, Warzone yeah. sequel. It, it is getting confusing between like all the Call of Duties being in development, the Microsoft buyout... Um, all the scandals going around in Activision and the rumors and whatnot, like yeah. So it's hard to keep track of like what's happening with Call of Duty. It used right. to be a simple getting a Call of Duty every year. Also, too, the fact that the Call of Duty games are getting harder and harder to make, and other studios have to come in and help make sure that this year's Call of Duty gets put out on time. Some have speculated that the sandbox mode mentioned in the February Warzone 2 announcement may refer to an Extraction Royale format similar to Hunt Showdown or Escape from Tarkov. Oh, that's cool. That'd be pretty cool. Um, so Warzone's kind of stale right now. I, I used to play a lot of Warzone. I haven't played it much. I, I kind of moved on to Valorant. Um the I really didn't like Caldera. They dropped the call they they made a whole new map for Call of Duty. Uh, it's bigger and it's way, way shittier. Um, the weapons that are that are that they added are also shittier and feel worse. Um, so there's a lot of reasons not to want to play. I didn't right. know that they increased the player health, which might be an answer to uh, the weapons that are too power that feel too powerful. Uh, mm -hmm. which would be a weird way to fix that. They could just lower the power of those weapons. Um, anyway, this whole most of the problem with this article is talking about the file size. People don't like the new map, Caldera, and they right. want Verdansk back, and they can't just put Verdansk in it because that would increase the file size by a lot. Um, yeah. However, they already have a second map. It's just tiny. It's called Rebirth Island. Um, and people like that more than they like Caldera. People are switching to playing a whole different game mode because they like right. the map more. And they made a lot of changes to that map recently too, which I heard were pretty good. So, uh, it's interesting that they think that the file size is a limitation. I mean, it is a limitation. It's always been a problem with Call of Duty. Um, yeah. I just think Warzone was developed with a lot of rolls of duct tape. I think that they just did a really <laughs> shitty job when they made this game. And now oh, the base the base of this game is just held together by duct tape and sticks. And yeah. uh, they'd have to redo the whole thing to optimize it better. Well, I think um, like they said, they didn't expect Warzone to take off the way it did. Right. And now, now that it is, now that it's the biggest part of Call of Duty... They're re scrambling to try and get that up to par, up to like the caliber of like what a Call of Duty game should be. They, they, and I think they're reverse engineering something that wasn't built for it. 
Yeah, they should put all of their stock into Warzone 2 mm -hmm. and la launch that with a big, huge launch. Uh, and make and for the love of God, put some compression in there. Like, there's no reason yeah. for this game to be fucking 200 gigabytes every time they, they want to update it. And yeah, I remember yeah. playing it on my PS4. It was 200 gigabytes on my PS4, and my PS4 was only a 500 gig console. So... <laughs> And and when there was when there's an update that's like a hundred gigs, it needs to double the size. It needs to copy over while it's installing. So it, you need double yeah. that amount of space. But if you need space in your PlayStation Five, you can type in exclamation point video. My last video is on upgrading your PlayStation Five with a new uh, solid state drive. It was sponsored by Gigabyte. Thank you, Gigabyte. Um. But anyway, I'm excited for Warzone 2. I'm excited for any updates that they do with regular uh, Warzone as well. I, I didn't know they updated the the player health. I'm willing to give that a shot again. Um, but yeah, I just don't like Caldera. It's very bad. Right. Um, anyway. That's it for the news. We're done. Yes, we're done. Which means we can move on to... Oh, yeah, there's a thing that we got to do. Quit of the week! Yeah. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! I couldn't decide, so I have <laughs> two here. Oh, look at that. The first one is Star Wars Whispers, and it's a picture of Luke, and it says, Father, when can I be on my own? <laughs> it's that's not it. canon. He should be saying, Uncle Owen! <laughs> And the other one is just the, the Twitter is chaotic nightclub photos. It's a woman putting her whole fist in her mouth. A guy to her right is staring directly at the camera, seemingly dancing. And the guy yes. to her left is in the background laughing and pointing directly at her. Well, it's not every day you're in the club and all of a sudden a girl just sticks her whole fist in her mouth while on the dance floor. It is kind of amazing. It looks like a renaissance yeah. painting. Oh, yeah, no, totally. Big fan of this picture. I will not be subscribing to this account, though. Yeah. I just clicked on it, that account, and the last picture they posted was a guy peeing at the bar. So I'm glad I didn't show <laughs> that on screen. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, notifications, Spoopy Girl X for 300 bits. Love my new Wolf Den t-shirt and hoodie. Both are well made and so comfy. Mousepad is next on the list. Thank you very much for supporting us. Thank I you. appreciate it. Uh, and Daryl Merlinski, thank you for the Prime subscription and Taking Shape also. Thank you for the 16 months. Um, all right, let's talk to you people real quick. Yes. Starting off with everybody who left a comment on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Last week, we streamed directly to YouTube because I had yes. problems trying to stream to Twitch. Turns out the problem was with the New York Twitch server. Or no, it was the problem was with whatever server was auto connecting. I could have just switched to a different Twitch server. There's a bunch of different servers. I panicked and just streamed to YouTube instead. Now I've learned I can just do a test stream and see which one works. I can just stream to that one. So that's what we did this week. Um, so there shouldn't be any problems. Uh, the problem is not with my VPN. I'm currently using Surfshark. So it shouldn't be a problem with that. Anyway, last week, Heidio Benjima. Bob saying he hates the rubber banding and the AI helping players at the back is weird considering he finished 12th on a majority of races. <laughs> that is uh, yeah, concerning uh, Mario Kart 8. There's a great video on the Clips channel of me playing Mario Kart 8. Listen, motherfucker. Every single time I got to the front, thrown right to the back every time i felt like i was doing good something happened and i got knocked all the way to the back <laughs> fuck that stupid game uh we got l comanche says wait a minute bob spends a hundred dollars on valorant but won't buy an air fryer i don't need an air fryer <laughs> i have an oven i don't have valorant you... skins before target has having a sale on air fryers and i almost sent you I don't a link need to... an air fryer. 
You say that now, but when you get it and you use it, it it's just changes your changes the world basically. There's two you'll kitchen never appliances. Cook, you'll never cook French fries the same way again. I don't even cook for. I reheat French fries. There's there's yeah. Two, you could re. They taste better when you air fry them. There's two kitchen appliances that I want. First, espresso machine. I already have one. Need an upgrade. Two, I want a rice cooker. That's not as exciting, but I just want a rice cooker. Uh, what's the, what's the espresso machine you want? What's the company that makes it? La Marzocco. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I were watching season two of Ted Lasso, and they're in a coffee shop, and my wife is like, that looks like the type of coffee machine Bob would buy. And I'm like, that is the type of coffee machine <laughs> Bob wants to buy. <laughs> yeah, Lamar Zoko is like the standard at a lot of coffee shops. It's that yeah. or like Slayer or something along those lines. Slayer. Um, and that's why I want it. Because I want to make it like they do in the coffee shops. Okay. <laughs> I have a gonna... Cuisinart. I have a Cuisinart 12 cup. <laughs> Makes good coffee. Tech Nanner in the chat says, when you live in New York, uh, you have to pick your kitchen appliances carefully. That's true. That's a good yes. point. You, you can buy a toaster oven that also doubles as an air fryer, so you have two in one. So, we, so believe it or not, at the studio, we have a convection oven that's kind of like mm -hmm. a toaster oven that right. has an air fry setting. So it's kind of yes. like an air... It's like a convection oven air fryer yeah, situation. Yeah, air frying oven, yeah. So I guess I have one. <laughs> there and your girlfriend has an air fryer. Yes. So you're so surrounded I'm, by air fryers. I, why would I get it if Hannah has it? <laughs> Just wait a few months. Because maybe I'll, I'll acquire one. <laughs> uh... Um, Seven says the only group I made on my Switch so far is the Pokemon games, but then I realized I have them all physically, so I won't really have trouble finding them anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of just pointless True. to make a, a group with games that you have physically. Yeah. I mean, I did it, but I think that's just for my reference, you know? Uh, Mohammed Abd Abdel Mohammed says it's less <laughs> folders, more custom filters true yeah i guess so. folders would be useful if they were on the home screen but they're not mm -hmm. and then they're not even in the library technically you have to press a button to get to them once you get to your library uh d linton says streamers are some of the largest whales for uh free-to-play games uh, also I, true yeah i don't deny that because like you're streaming the game this is like how you live your life this is like your job so like yeah people are gonna come in they want to see something cool you know so like if you're playing with the default valorant skins nobody wants to see that they want to see yeah. some cool shit that they don't see when they're playing at home uh anyway all convection ovens are air fryers says s marcy not well technically correct it wouldn't correct. Wouldn't an oven the, be an the air thing fryer? About air fryers is they they heat up much faster and more evenly than a, a traditional oven does. So you can cook things very fast, and they get very crispy very fast. Uh, Retin link has a video on 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 air fryer versus oven and 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 i watched that and i was like i don't need i don't need an air fryer i'm good america's test kitchen oh did God. their t videos on the air fryer and they said air fryers are good alternatives to a, a traditional oven and as uh carson says in the chat air fryers are the best way to reheat mcdonald's french fries to make them crispy again I will never reheat McDonald's French fries. Those go right in the trash. You can reheat them in an air fryer. They go directly in the trash the second they get cold. <laughs> My roommate puts McDonald's in the fridge for the next day. What a fucking uh, heathen. So there's a, I read an article 
on how long it takes McDonald's French fries to start sucking. Four seconds. Basically, <laughs> you have a 17-minute window from when they come out of the the oil. Yeah. You have 17 minutes from when that happens to eat it for it to be maximum freshness. So basically, never get delivery, McDonald's. True, even though I've done it many times. Um... I've seen America's Test Kitchen's videos on coffee and espresso, and I I will never trust them again. <laughs> All I buy is stuff that they recommend. Uh, uh, now I hate to tell you this, Bob, but I think this has devolved into Air Fryer Weekly. I know every time, every time. <laughs> Is Will is Will a wheel or a door guy though? Have you heard this? No. What's the difference? Here's here's the question, Will. Yes. Are there more wheels in the world or doors in the world? <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna say wheels. Thank you. Because there are definitely things that have wheels but no doors mm -hmm. and doors a door is really only a door once it's used for its purpose you know I, i'm wheels so happy you're on yeah. the same page so so i i made this argument too and and uh part of the argument that i said was the definition of a door is you have to be able to go through it or else it's not a fucking right. door uh but apparently that's not the definition of a door a door, a, I mean, I think I, I guess people think a door is literally like the slab of wood on its own. Because like I can go to Home Depot and buy a door, but it doesn't technically become a door until I install it. You so know? the definition is an entryway to a room or cupboard or something like that. So like a right. like a like a like the door to like the kitchen cabinet like counts as like right. a, like a door or, or a door to the cupboard, I should say. Yeah. Um, so like that counts as a door, but you're sitting on a chair that has six wheels on it. Yeah. Every drawer has wheels in it to bring the drawer out. So like yeah. there's conveyor belts that have hundreds of wheels on them. Yeah. There's office buildings that have lots of doors, but those office buildings have rolly chairs. So each person yeah. in there has six wheels on their person. It doesn't make any sense to say that there's yeah. fucking more doors it doesn't make any sense watches full of gears well those are gears gears are different gears are different gears are different but there's scrape boards there's bicycles there's yeah. motorcycles opportunities are doors <laughs> <laughs> okay if we're going for metaphorical doors yeah what's a metaphorical wheel the circle of life. VCRs have doors. <laughs> okay, now that those are that's not a door. That's like a that's like a slot. Now, do cassette tapes? Those are gears, I guess, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I don't listen. I don't care. There's more wheels, hands down. Um, Metascension asks the real question though are there more deals or whores uh, I'm going to say deals yeah unless you count all of history then probably whores yeah uh, y'all talk about the most random stuff we're talking about the t the, the important topics of the day yes so whose side are you on, Will Smith or Chris Rock? <laughs> 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 I was streaming yesterday, or was it yes? No, on Sunday when that went down, and I was like, guys, I do not care at all. And that's all the chat <laughs> wanted to talk about was the slap. And yeah. then they made me watch it and I watched it and I was and I thought it was I thought it was like a joke. I didn't think it was I didn't think they actually he actually connected. Yeah. Um I thought he hit the mic or something. Um yeah. And then Eve came over with the uncensored version, and I watched that, and I was like, okay, well, I mean, 
a piece of shit for turning it physical or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I was in bed and my wife came over and she's like, Will Smith punched Chris Rock at the Oscars. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> then I went back and watched it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that got scary. And then the memes happened and it was funny again. <laughs> I have to take down my Will Smith shrine. <laughs> Do I have that in? So I there's a video on the Wolf Den channel of when I set up like the little collection that was behind the old Wolf Den yeah. set. And in that collection was a Will Smith shrine. Will it was Smith shrine. Yeah, one of the one of the little squares was just a bunch of Will Smith action figures. Yeah. Um, now I like him less because he. I mean, smacked the guy in the middle of the fucking award show. <laughs> I mean, it's not the worst thing. To I mean, like it's bad, obviously, but like in terms of like you know, things to be canceled over. I don't think that's something, you know, he's already apologized for it at least twice. It's enough to like someone less. No, true. I saw, I saw, I I think it was a soda pop and it was a Twitch streamer. Yeah. Usually horrible takes (laughs) coming from this man, (laughs) but he, uh, he had a really good point. He was like, look, man, I've been in a situation where you're in a room full of people and somebody says something shitty. You want to do something about it, but you don't because you don't want to ruin the vibe. Yeah. And it's like, you're in a room full of people, A, and B, it's being broadcasted to millions and millions of people. So yeah. now you're ruining the vibe for millions and millions of people. Yeah. Uh, They but. both apologize. I don't think Chris Rock ever apologized. No, Chris, Rock, Chris Rock didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> He told a bad joke. That was it. I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe he shouldn't have made a joke about, you know, Jada and her alopecia, but at the same time, he's a comedian. He tells offensive jokes. That's that's his it, MO. It probably he probably didn't even know she had alopecia cuz she looks like she has a head of hair. Like she it looks like she has a crew cut. Right. And GI Jane, I don't know if you googled it after is hot so like i don't don't think that's an insult at all (laughs) Uh, it was a stupid joke it was like a throwaway joke anyway uh good times but he he crushed it after that he took he took the slap yeah he di'd he braced for impact (laughs) took the slap (laughs) and then just went wow he just slapped the shit out of me and then he paused for a little bit and then just went for it and just finished it and walked off. That was it. <laughs> one, of, one of my friends sent me a video of the slap, but when he slaps Chris Rock, the Super Mario 64 star that. comes out. <laughs> that was almost the tweet of the week. <laughs> I saw that. I saw one that was uh, like the, the hit boxes for, for Will Smith and for <laughs> Chris Rock. Uh, and I saw one that was Paper Mario... It was right before Chris Rock gets hit where he's bracing and it's yeah. Paper Mario holding the left stick all the way to like brace for impact. I saw one where it was uh, the music for Metroid Dread when the Emmy finds you <laughs> and then Chris Rock, Chris Rock flashes the, the counter the counter sign and then like he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see that one. That was good. I, I saw uh, a tweet that said um all Chris Rock was thinking after he got slapped was, how could I get him to hit me again? <laughs> <laughs> you can see in his brain all of the jokes he's thinking of, and then he just yeah. doesn't do it. <laughs> well, apparently, after this, Chris Rock like had a tour scheduled, and his his uh, shows are selling out left and right now. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. So I'm sure those people are going to be very entertained by Oscar night stories. I would love to hear that. I'd love to hear him yeah. talk about that. <laughs> also, he has like a whole doc. His wife has like a like a charity for like uh, something about hair, like people who uh, yeah. can't afford haircuts or something. And he has a whole documentary yeah. about uh, about hair. Yeah, it, and like, and to be fair, like there is this like stigma about like black hair and black women's hair, especially. And like that documentary was about like being proud of the hair you have. Mm -hmm. Um, So I understand why people are upset that he made a joke like that at the expense of someone someone suffering from alopecia. But at the same time, 
that doesn't justify getting up in the middle of an award show, walking over to him, smacking him in the face, and then walking back screaming, keep my wife's name out of your mouth. It That was the most tame joke to get offended over. But yeah. if, if people are okay with that violence, Ricky Gervais should have been hit yeah, a exactly. lot, <laughs> a lot like, more he, and a lot harder. <laughs> he should be dead. Basically. Ricky Gervais would be dead right now if yeah. he did an award show after this incident. Because <laughs> <laughs> people now, p- people there are like, oh, we can fight back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, Amanda Askey, thanks for the 27 months. Hi, Bob and Will. Hope your Tuesday is better than average. It is. Yeah. Oh, Not and Aiden. Damn, two handsome ass men on my screen at the same time. A wooga hubba hubba. Whistles, whistles, wooza wooza, awa, awa. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> anyway. Uh guys, we I gotta pee. So thank you yeah. for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand wherever, whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms um x i put i typed it in the chat exclamation point giveaway we're giving away pax east tickets three of them you and two of your friends can go to pax east um if you want only please only enter if you can make it to pax east (laughs) (laughs) don't just do it and take the tickets if you're not even gonna go um yeah I'll also be tweeting it uh, on the Wolf Den account after this podcast. Um, and it's going to end on Thursday at around like 8 o'clock. And I'll pick the winners here on Twitch live. Um, so do that. Right now, we're going to raid, yes. I think. Um, who are we going to raid? We're going to raid Dan. Uh, he's playing Kirby, which is a phenomenal game. I've been playing it here on Twitch. Uh, hopefully, there'll be some clips videos soon. I've been playing it uh, uh, without taking damage. Because <laughs> I wanted to make the game hard. The game is actually a fair... A fa- it's, it's got a fair difficulty. It's on the easy side. Right. Um, but it, it, the difficulty kind of ramps up. Um, but I've been doing it where every hit is an instant death. So if I get hit once, I have to kill myself where I'm standing. Oh, damn. Um, and it That's, has been uh, very difficult. <laughs> I forgot what those are called. That's like a specific... No hit. ...style of like... Yeah, no hit. Or no damage. Zero damage. Uh, yeah. But 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 in those runs, those are like usually speed runs. And in those runs, right. if you get hit, the whole run's over. I'm not doing that. I'm yeah. just killing myself where I stand. <laughs> right. Um, uh, so yeah, it's been it's been fun. It's been interesting. I had to play the games in, in in like a weird way. I have to kind of cheese it sometimes. Um, yeah. But it's fun. Uh, I recommend everybody uh, check out the game. Try the demo at least. Mm-hmm. It's a fun demo. Uh, anyway, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for being here. Go say hi to Dan. Goodbye. Bye.